So here we go with episode three of the second season of Low Key. Man, second episode, wasn't really feeling it. Not really good at all for me. I didn't enjoy it. First episode, confusing, but it left me curious. But with episode three, you know, I decided to go ahead and keep trying and keep giving it a shot because of how much I love the first season, plus others who had seen the first four episodes because they got early previews of it said that even if episode two didn't work, to stay tuned because episodes three and four were better. So I decided to do that. I'm not going to drop the show. I'm going to keep seeing it, keep watching it, and seeing if it really does improve. Because really, it truthfully should hopefully end up being a good show when all said and done. But man, episode two, not very good at all, yo. Episode three is called 1893. They did this cool little Easter egg where the Marvel Studios logo is uh, like when it shows on the screen, they have like this old timey piano. I thought that was a really nice touch. Deep into the past we go as we get reacquainted with Ravona. Yes, Ravona Renslayer, who is up to some kind of caper with Miss Minutes. So of course that takes us back to our main characters, Loki and Mobius, who want to go back in time to 1893 because they realize if they can find Renslayer and Miss Minutes, they might be able to put a stop to this problem that they've had since the end of season one with He Who Remains. This episode is more of what I wanted from this show. This is more like it. You really see the chemistry in this one between Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson. Like, these guys are magic together on screen. This episode really shows it probably better than any of the other episodes so far in season two of Low Key. Just a few minutes into this episode, I totally know where they're going with this. We're going to end up seeing what was the post credit scene from Ant-Man where they see Victor Timely. Based on where they're at and the way they're dressed, like that's for sure what's going to happen here. Like I, I, I knew that minutes into the episode. I wasn't complaining about that, but I was happy that we're finally getting to see another Kang variant on screen. And of course, like I mentioned, this is the example of what we see with... Jonathan Majors once again getting to stretch those acting skills and playing another Kang variant, Victor Timely, who behaves differently from Rama Tut and all the other ones that we saw in Ant-Man and in this show previously. And I was looking forward to this. Of course, Loki knows about the dangerous situation they're in, but Mobius is like, come on, this guy's harmless. You know, and it's true because Majors plays Victor Timely like just some kooky... Dude, there's nothing menacing about him when he's first introduced here as Victor Timely. Playing this like old timey 1800s like scientist must be so much fun, man. You could tell this dude had a great time playing Kang and what a great opportunity, you know, to play one character with many different versions of that same character. That's a that's phenomenal. This probably feels the most like Back to the Future, like it's got that vibe. So, uh so Loki and Mobius and Renslayer all go up to at the same time and go to try to talk to Victor Timely with Renslayer being told that Victor Timely is destined to become he who remains. With, of course, Loki and Mobius trying to put an end to this Kang conquest that they're not even sure about because the timeline's all messed up. Meanwhile, we have a surprising appearance from Sylvie. And apparently I was told that I called her Sophie in the first episode. Oh man, I feel like a damn idiot. I really, really do. I mean, I'll be honest with y'all. I'm not going to BS you about this. I was extremely tired when I watched the, the episode for the first time. So maybe that's why things didn't click in my brain. The problem with YouTube is that like, I had to do my review, but I, I, didn't, I couldn't like wait. Maybe next time I'll just wait and just... Where, where my head is better and then do the review for quality purposes. I was just felt like I was kind of pressuring myself into doing it faster. So my apologies on that. You know, I don't ever do that on purpose. Um, and I never mean to do that, you know. But yeah, <laughs> I can't believe I called her Sophie. Loki and Sylvie start another one of their fight slash arguments. You know, they really do come off like a married couple sometimes in this show over what to do about Victor Timely. 
and Loki's just caught up in the middle of this madness. There's a really nice scene with Victor Timely and Renslayer that I really enjoyed sort of playing up on their, you know, relationship and Miss Minutes is there making funny faces. You know, I, I kept thinking that when Kang in Ant-Man, when he was really emotional talking to, um, talking to Wasp, you know, when they were in his, the original Wasp, Michelle Pfeiffer, when they were in Janet, when they were in his like lair or whatever, I thought, because the way he, he said something like, you have no idea what I've lost, it, I thought it implied that Kang and Ravona, that Ravona Renslayer died and that Kang was, was heartbroken by it. And I, of course, I like the idea of villains sort of being humanized in a way sometimes. You know, you don't always want to do it, but Thanos had a little bit of that. Uh, Killmonger, a lot of the great all-time villains, Magneto, of course, have a bone to pick. But sometimes the bone they have to pick is relatively, it makes sense. You know, and if that's why Kang is so upset about everything, then again, that would make sense to me. Ravona has to explain to Victor Timely what's going on with the low keys and what happened um, at the end of time, at the end of season one. Victor Timely, of course, has no idea, which is interesting because there's a couple different ways it could have gone about this. It could have had a situation where Victor Timely knew who Kang the Conqueror was. He knew everything and was just hiding out in the past. But that's not what's going on here. Here we have a situation where this variant is not just a branching variant of Kang. This one is from a branching timeline, yes, but does not appear to be evil. And that's the thing I like about Kang is that not every variant is evil. And that's cool. Victor Timely has like a notepad or a notebook where he has like this collection of information he's gathered for a device he's going to make to control time. So the ambition is certainly there. You know, Miss Minutes in this episode really comes off like a real mastermind. I know that she's an artificial life form. She's not, I don't believe she's fully sentient, probably partially. But when I'm watching the episode and the things she says to Victor Timely and to Renslayer, it makes me just think, man, she's... I wonder if, like, you know, he who remains or whomever programmed her to be like this because they knew how the variants would behave or some of them. I don't know, but she comes off very mischievous in this episode. Like, there's something else going on. You know what I mean? And at one point in the episode, Miss Minutes actually talks about it, how the original Kang or whoever created her before the multiversal war and he gave her autonomy. So she basically has a mind of her own she's not pre-programmed but she seems to have a connection with Kang that is almost like a human connection in some ways and then we come to find out that Miss Minutes is uh, a little bit angry at Kang it's almost like Miss Minutes is in love with him and upset that he didn't make her a body that that's the way I'm perceiving it am I wrong Miss Minutes feels like she was used by Kang or at least that variant so Ravona shows up with a pruning gun and takes control saying she's the one in charge and poor Victor has no idea what to make of all of this. And right then, Loki and, Mo and Moby, excuse me, show up to try to stop her from getting rid of this variant. Timely. So then Sylvie shows up and she's ready to kill Victor Timely, but Victor Timely's explained to her, look, I, I haven't done anything wrong. And she's like, no, you have. And he's like, look, I can make my own choices. Basically trying to explain to her that not every variant of him is evil, which I like. I like that. I talked about it earlier in this review. Like, I like that aspect of it. And ultimately, Sylvie's not even a bad, like, she's not really a villain. She's just got, she feels like she has to get this done, but not all the variants are bad. Just like how I'm sure when Secret Wars comes out, we'll see evil variants of some of the Avengers or some of the good guys. Sylvie ends up not killing Victor Timely. And so Victor, Loki, and Mobius all go through the portal and leave 1893. And we're left with Renslayer and Sylvie together face-to-face -face in 1893. So the episode cliffhanger is Ravona and Miss Minutes end up going to the end of time, the same fortress or whatever, lair of He Who Remains. He Who Remains is on the chair dead. And Miss Minutes is like, I can tell you a big secret about you, but it's going to make you angry. And that's the cliffhanger, yo. So what is the big secret? That is what 
they are hooking us with for next week. This episode was my favorite one so far of the season. Way better than episode one and episode two. Things actually happened. Jonathan Majors was great. All the actors were great in this episode. And now I'm actually excited to see episode four because I do want to know what happens to these characters and what's going to end up happening to Victor Timely as well as uh, Renslayer and everybody else. So those are my thoughts on Low Key Season 2, Episode 3. What are yours? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.